we are going to discuss today one very important chapter of physics surface tension which will fetch you one mark in the final examination of MCET. I am Srinu Sachari discussing this particular topic. Surface tension when we discuss mainly it is a force per unit length acting on either side of a line imagined, imagination what we people are taking up that is the line we have to imagine on the surface of the liquid on either sides of the line the force per unit length whatever that is acting that is what we generally call it as surface tension. Generally surface tension we represent that one by force per unit length. But one should be able to understand how to take this length part of it carefully. Otherwise either we get the answer double the answer or half the correct answer like. In the sense what? If suppose I consider a circular plate, circular plate of radius r when it is given length should be taken as 2 pi r. Only one particular surface which is to be taken as effective surface over here. If it is suppose a square plate then of course we can understand the length in this case going to be 4L. And exactly in the same manner for a rectangle 2 into L plus B we can take up. So if they are plates like that means solid pieces one has to consider only one length that should be taken as effective length while substituting in this formula that is one area to be concentrated on. Come to the second one. Suppose that fellow says a wire, that wire is molded into a circular frame. Circular frame means you will be having both the sides to be counted. In the sense what? The effective length in this particular case will be 2 into 2 pi r. Exactly in the same manner the same wire is made into a, a square frame then of course length should be taken as 2 into 4L. By mistake if you are not considering 2 times here you will not get the right option over there. So one should be able to understand how to take the length part of it carefully that is one area before taking up the problems we have to recollect. Coming to the second one surface tension generally we can even write it like this also work done by change in area. Even while calculating this area also, one should be careful. For example, if it is a circular plate once again, then of course, we people can take the area as pi r square. If it is a circular frame by any chance, then area to be taken 2 into pi r square. That means two surfaces we people have to count. I have already told you exactly in the same manner for a square shaped plate area to be taken L square for a square shaped frame it should be taken 2 L square. This is actually the concept one has to remember as far as the change in area that is concerned. So this is one zone where one should be very careful in calculating the values. And secondly Sometimes they may ask you coalescing of drops. Several droplets n by number having the same radius r, they are all coalesced to form a single big drop. What would be the work done in this particular process they may ask you. Given the surface tension is t they mention in the problem, then we can write 4 pi r square into n minus n power 2 by 3 whole multiplied by t. This is the formula what we have to consider when several small droplets are coalesced to form a single big drop of capital R radius for example. Exactly in the same manner a very big drop of radius R is now split into n small droplets then what happens? What will be the work done in that particular case 4 pi capital R square into n power 1 by 3 minus 1 into t. But one thing you should understand n, n power 1 by 3, n power 2 by 3. How to write them in terms of the radius of the smaller droplet and radius of the bigger droplet. n can be written as r cube by r cube. Remember this point carefully that means r cube is equal to n r cube is the equation. 
exactly like that if you take n power 1 by 3 that can be written as r by r. Exactly in the same manner n power 2 by 3 you can write that one as r square by r square. These three corresponding formulae if one remembers writing the equations in terms of capital R and small r would be very very simple and easy. So, these areas we have to look into as far as work done that is concerned. Come to the last point in this particular case what will be the excess pressure sometimes they may ask you to calculate. Excess pressure in a drop suppose if they ask you which drop generally that will be a liquid drop as such that excess pressure we write it as 2 T by R that in the sense what small r represents the radius of that drop what has been taken up. If it is a soap bubble by any chance if we consider this way the excess pressure will be 2 times this formula that in the sense 4 T by R we people used to take up. But one thing you should understand pressure is inversely proportional to R that means smaller the bubble more will be the pressure that is the understanding what one should have before taking up the applications part of this. So, these are the major equations one has to remember before taking up some of the applications of this particular chapter called surface tension. Let us now take up few applications from this one as usual. Let us start from the first problem onward. Let us take the first number please. A disc of paper of radius capital R has a hole of radius small r. It is floating on the surface of a liquid of surface tension T. The energy needed to pull it out carefully is how much? In fact, energy when we consider that is as well equivalent to work done which is as well equivalent to change in area into surface tension. But what will now be this change in area? Capital R is the radius and small r is the radius of the hole. Then I can write pi r square minus pi small r square. That is going to be what? Pi into r square minus r square into surface tension. That is going to be the value what we are getting. That means what the energy in this particular case is nothing other than work done which is in other words we can call it as a change in area into surface tension pi r square minus pi r square this gives you the actual area of that particular disc what is in contact with the surface of the liquid that is the concept. So, correct option for us is going to be the second option in this particular question number 1. Let us now check the second number please. The second problem, the force required to separate a glass, glass plate of area 10 power minus 2 meter square with a film of water 0 0.05 millimeter thickness between them if surface tension of water is 70 into 10 power minus 3 Newton per meter. This is actually the concept once again. One thing should understand, you should understand that the moment that fellow says this is a film, film is going to have two effective faces. So, whether you take its area or length whatever it is two times you have to consider while calculating the value. In fact, we all know very well surface tension T is equal to work by change in area like we people can take up. But all of you can understand work can be written as force into displacement that displacement in this case is nothing other than the thickness divided by how many areas for that film we have to take I said two areas are to be taken up therefore two times delta A now we should write it in this case. So, automatically what is the force is the question surface tension value has been given. So, force is equal to 2 times surface tension into delta A by thickness what has been given of that particular film. What is the formula what are the values of T given just you see 70 into 10 power minus 3 into what is the change in area given 10 power minus 2 meter square directly you can write 10 power minus 2 meter square. 
what is the thickness of that film given 0 0.05 millimeter millimeter to meter conversion is 10 power minus 3 therefore you can write 5 into 10 power minus 5 you can write 10 power minus 3 minus 2 that will be 10 power minus 5 this gets cancelled and this of course 14 times you will be getting exactly 28 Newton that will now be the formula the value in the sense the very first option that is going to be true for this question number second as such. Now let us check the next number question number 3. Look at that work of 6 into 10 to the power minus 4 joule is required to be done in increasing the size of a soap film from 10 centimeter by 6 centimeter to 10 centimeter by 11 centimeter. The surface tension of the film is once again one should immediately grasp the point it is a film the moment it has it is a film two separate areas have to be taken up two times the effective area of course you can directly write surface tension is equal to work done by change in area fine what exactly is the work that has been given 6 into 10 to the power minus 4 but change in area is to be taken twice because of the film over here what will now be the change in area of the film 10 by 11 that in the sense 110 centimeter square is the final area 10 by 6 60 centimeter square is the initial area but all are in centimeter square we have to convert them into meter square as such so into 10 power minus 4 10 power minus 4 gets cancelled so what is now left over 6 by 2 into 50 here you directly can understand this then it is 6 into 10 to the power minus 2 what newton per meter that must now be the corresponding answer for us so option is going to be the second one 6 into 10 power minus 2 newton per meter square meter that is actually the value of surface tension in question number 3 now let us check the next number that is question number 4 please a mercury drop of radius 1 centimeter is spread into 10 power 6 drops of equal size. The energy expended in joule is how much given the surface tension of mercury as 460 into 10 power minus 3 newton per meter. Just now I have mentioned splitting up of a bigger drop into a smaller drop into several smaller droplets. What exactly is the work done? that itself is called as energy. What is this particular formula we people have taken up? Bigger drop is split into smaller droplets. Therefore, 4 pi capital R square into n power 1 by 3 minus 1 into surface tension. This is a direct formula for us. Out of that one, 4 pi you write it as it is r is given 1 centimeter square it should be 10 to the power minus 4 meter square all of you can identify n is given 10 to the power 6 over there cube root of 10 power 6 now becomes 100 minus 1 into what is the value of surface tension that is given 460 into 10 power minus 3 that is the value given to us now, if you simplify this one, what will you get? It's, this value is going to be 99. So, 4 pi into 99 into 460 into 10 to the power minus 7. If you simplify the total lot, you will be getting nearly 0 0.057 value. So, check that option over there carefully. What is this value in? Automatically, that will be in joule. So, 0 0.057 joule. But this particular formula is one of the very, very important applications for us. Splitting up of a bigger drop into smaller droplets. This is actually the application for that. Now, let us check the next number. Problem number 5 this time. An air bubble of radius r is formed at a depth h below the surface of water. The pressure inside the bubble is how much? T is given as surface tension, P naught is given as atmospheric pressure and D is density of water. With slight observation, you can understand what is going to be the pressure that is acting on the system. When we consider there is a cylindrical vessel like this 
and there is an air bubble he is talking about. Air bubble is where it is taken up inside water. This is actually the case for example. When you take this is the level of water, certainly atmospheric pressure will act on that surface first of all. In addition to that, height of this liquid column if it is h, there will be h rho g pressure also that is acting on this. But you should understand air bubble inside water, how many effective phases it will have? Only one effective phase it will have. That means what will be the excess pressure inside the air bubble please? 2 T by R due to one effective phase there. Then what will now be the effective pressure on the air bubble? Atmospheric pressure will be there plus pressure due to this particular liquid that has been taken. What is the density that is given? D given. So, let us write that one H G D G plus 2 T by R. But one should be careful in the in understanding air bubble please. Air bubble inside water, outside that air bubble you have complete water only. Air is only inside the bubble. Therefore, effective phase is only one due to which 2 T by R one should take the excess pressure inside the system. So, P naught plus H D G plus 2 T by R this is going to be the total pressure acting on that air bubble. Look at those options. Fourth option is the correct option. By mistake, if you take two phases over here by any chance, you will be getting the third option which has the correct one. But third option is not a correct option in this case because air bubble will have only one effective phase. I repeat, it will have only one effective phase. That is the point. Now come to the next one. That is question number six. A, air, a bubble of radius R1 is inside the other of radius R2. R2 is greater than R1 that is given there. The radius of the bubble which has same pressure difference as the pressure difference of inside the smaller and outside the larger bubble. In fact, bubble in bubble in this particular case, then you can definitely understand 1 by R effective will now be 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 where R1 and R2 are their individual radii, whether R1 is greater or R2 is greater, no problem when you are adding them. Then what will you get out of this one actually? R1 plus R2 by R1 R2 you will get. But in fact, we just want the value of R effective here. Come on, reciprocate this one. R1 R2 by R1 plus R2 that is actually the equation what you are going to get. That in the sense which option that is tallied there? The very first option is going to be given as R1 R2 by R2 plus R1 or R1 plus R2 that hardly matters. So, that is the question number 6. The option for that one is the very first one. Let us check the question number 7 now please. Capillary tubes of diameters 1 millimeter, 1.5 millimeter and 2 millimeter are dipped vertically in the same liquid. The capillary ascents of the liquid in the tubes are in the ratio. In fact, by taking a capillarity into account, when we consider the height of the capillary rise and radius of the capillary tube, these two are inversely proportional to each other means what? Lesser the radius of the capillary tube, more will be the height capillary rise. That is the concept. Now, here H1 is to H2 is to H3 is asked. That now can be rewritten as 1 by R1 is to 1 by R2 is to 1 by R3. According to mathematical form, we can write this one R2 R3 is to R1 R3 is to R1, R2 like that also I can write the same thing. Now, what are the values given you check it? R2 is 1.5 and R3 is 2. Diameter ratio means radii ratio which, which are similar. So, 1.5 into 2 that becomes 3. Now, R1, R3 1 into 2 that becomes 2. R1, R2 1 into 1.5 that becomes 1.5. Now again 0.5 you cut throughout, 6 times here, 4 times here, 0.5 means 3 times here. 6 is to 4 is to 3, 
check that particular option number 2 exactly 6 is to 4 is to 3 we have so this is the ratio of capillary heights what we people are getting with those three different capillary tubes of different diameters or radii what, whatever that is now come to the next question question number 8 if the force required to pull out a glass plate of length 9.8 centimeter and thickness 2 millimeter from the surface of a liquid is 0.6 gram weight, then the surface tension of the liquid is how much? That is the concept. But cleverly he has framed this question. Usually when a plate is taken up, length and breadth are going to be given to it when it is in contact with the surface of water. But here, length and thickness are given. That means the plate is made in contact with water in this position, not like this. That is one point we have to understand. Therefore, what is the question? What is the surface tension of the liquid? Surface tension is equal to F by L. What is this L over here? It is 2 into L plus T. Because if you take this one length and thickness, they form a small rectangle here. What is the area of the, the length of that one? 2 into L plus T. So, this is the formula one should apply. What is the force given? 0.6 gram weight. That means gram to kg 10 power minus 3. So, we can write 6 into 10 to the power minus 4 into 9.8. So, many Newton. By L plus T. L is 9.8 T is 2 millimeter, that is 0 0.2 centimeter. So, 9.8 plus 0 0.2, that now becomes 10 centimeter as such. So, 2 into 10, 20 centimeter into 10 power minus 2 meter, you can cut that one like. So, automatically this goes here minus 2 times and of course, you will be getting here 3 times and here 10 times 2. So, 3 times 9.8. Right. So, it is now going to be how much you will be getting 29.4, 3 times 9.8, right. 29.4 into 10 to the power minus 2 by 10, that in the sense what? 2.94 into 10 to the power minus 2 or you can even write the same thing as 29.4 into 10 to the power minus 3. Whichever option that is tallying there, we have to look into that. It is given there 29.4 into 10 power minus 3 is given. Therefore, the fourth option is going to be correct option for this question number 8 as such. Let us check the question number 9 please. When a clean and lengthy capillary tube is dipped vertically in a beaker containing water, the water rises to a height of 8 centimeter. What happens if another capillary tube of length 4 cm having the same radius is dipped vertically in the same beaker containing water? Take angle of contact as 0 degrees. That is the concept. One thing one should understand. When a capillary tube of insufficient length is dipped in water or any other liquid, then we never used to find the water coming out like a fountain. So, first option what has been given over there is not going to be the correct option. Water flows out like a fountain he is talking. It is not possible at all. But in but this particular case, H by cos theta, that must be constant. This is the shortcut formula for this model question. You can write directly H1 by H2 is equal to cos theta 1 by cos theta 2. Like this you can write. Or H1 by cos theta 1 is equal to H2 by cos theta 2. Whichever you want, you can write both are one and the same as such. Now, look at carefully H1 is given 8 centimeter. Theta is given 0. Cos 0 is 1. Every one of us we know. Is equal to this is 4 and we need to know what is theta 2. Then what can I write? Cos theta 2 is equal to half because 4 by 8. Now, automatically theta 2 becomes 60 degrees. Then what should be the correct answer? Capillary rise will be 4 centimeter. It completely fills the gap of that tube. 
at the same time what should be the angle of contact there 60 degrees so see the third option carefully please water rises to a height of 4 centimeter only and the angle of contact will now be 60 degrees this is the correct option for this question number 9 that in the sense ninth question has got the third option but don't be misled by looking to the very first option water flows out like a fountain it will not it is not at all possible remember that point carefully come to the next question that is question number 10 please look at that if the radii of two bubbles are r1 and r2 then the ratio of respective masses of air in them will be p0 is given atmospheric pressure and t is given surface tension one should understand mass depends on the product of pressure and volume mass is proportional to p into v this is the concept based on which they have framed this particular problem. You can now write m1 by m2 is equal to p1 by p2 into v2, v1 by v2. What is p1? Atmospheric pressure plus 4t by r1. Why 4t? We can understand it is a bubble. Bubble will have 4t by r as ex excess pressure. Whole divided by p0 plus 4t by r2 that is for the second bubble fine but what about volume volume becomes 4 by 3 pi r1 cube for the first one 4 by 3 pi r2 cube for the second one if you take the ratio 4 by 3 and pi they get cancelled you will be left with r1 cube by r2 cube or you can even write r1 by r2 whole cube which option that is tallied over there you check it fourth option is going to be tallied p0 plus 4t by r1 by p0 plus 4t by r2 into r1 cube by r2 cube or you can even write the same as r1 by r2 whole cube so fourth option is the correct option for this question number 10 as such now look at the next question that is question number 11 two air bubbles of radii 2 millimeter and 4 millimeter formed in the same liquid come together to form a big bubble if the surface tension of the liquid is 0.7 newton per meter the radius of curvature of common interface to both the bubbles will be how much one thing one should understand earlier we have discussed a model where bubble inside the bubble we have taken one small bubble inside another bubble but now it is not like that both are outside only they are now in contact with each other then the common interface will be like this that is the point one has to remember then what will be the formula 1 by r effective is equal to 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 one should take up then what are the values given 1 by 2 minus 1 by 4 you now can write this one 4 as LCM here 1 by 4 you people are getting then what you can understand from this effective radius will now be 4 what millimeter that is a true but one should understand always the lesser the radius of the bubble more will be the pressure I have already told you that point therefore the concave surface must be towards the smaller bubble so which option that is going to be true in this case look at 4 millimeter should be the radius there and concave surface must be towards a smaller bubble which option that is going to be true there check it third option is correct 4 millimeter with concave surface towards the smaller bubble that is the corresponding answer for this question number 11. Now let us check the next number that is question number 12. Two soap bubbles combine to form a single bubble. In this process, the change in volume and surface area are V and A respectively. If P is the atmospheric pressure and T is surface tension of the soap solution, then which equation out of the four are correct? Same question has been repeatedly asked two times at MSET level so far. One should understand so two soap bubbles are combined fine. He has not mentioned the temperature of the system is a variable like. So one should consider this is taking place at constant temperature like. For constant temperature system, Boyle's law can be valid. So you can directly write PV is equal to P 
पी वन वी वन प्लस पी टू वी टू ई कैन रईट लाइक दिस Let us check this way. Atmospheric pressure is given as P, and it is a soap bubble given. So I can write P plus soap bubble four T by R. R is the effective radius. Into what is V now? Four by three pi R cube. I can write directly. Now that is equal to P one V one plus P two V two P plus What is this value now? Four t by r one. This time r one is the radius of the first. Into v one. What should I write? Four by three pi r one cube. I can write directly like that. Now, if you take up this matter plus what is p two v two? P two is going to be p plus four t by r two. You can write into four by three pi. R two cube for the second bubble. So one should understand here. This is the effective pressure, and this one is effective volume. But one can understand the same thing can be rewritten this way. Look at how I am writing the cases, please. P into I take P common here. Four by three pi R cube. That is of the bigger bubble. This I bring it this side. Minus four by three pi r one cube for the first bubble. Minus four by three pi r two cube. This is the entire thing with p. And let us take plus four t by r into this much. I write this way. Four t by three I take. Four t by three I take common. What is left now? Four pi r cube by r. That means how much you'll be getting? Four pi r square minus four pi r one square minus four pi r two square. This is the concept. Is equal to zero. You will be getting. Look at the question carefully. What are the values of change in volume and change in surface area given? Change in volume is given as v. Change in surface area is given as a so how to rewrite this one now p into v this is all change in volume plus 4t by 3 into this is all change in area a is equal to 0 now come on bring this 3 this side please 3 pv plus 4t a is equal to 0 this should be the correct option now search for that one where it is 3 pv Plus four T A is equal to zero. That is our fourth option given in that particular question number twelve. So this is one of the excellent model questions what we are having, right? Remember this one carefully. Now come to the next question that is problem number thirteen. Let us just read that one once again. Two soap bubbles of radius A and B combine to form a single bubble of radius C. If P is the external pressure, then the surface tension of the soap solution is how much? Once again, the same question almost. You should understand that the total value of pressure into volume, right? This is Boyle's law. Once again, I can write. Once again, I can take it in the same manner itself. But what are the values he has given? You just look at carefully. A is the radius of the first bubble. B is the radius of the second. C is the radius of the third. Then how to write this one now? P plus four t by r. That is c. Into what is this v now to be taken? Four by three pi r cube. That means c cube. Is equal to p once again. P plus four t by a this time. Into four by three pi a cube. Plus p plus four t by b into what is this value? Four by three pi b cube. The same question almost with a slight modification in the wording. So in this particular case, can't I once again write that p into? You can take up what are the things he is giving you. I can take p into four by three pi. I can take common into c cube. Minus a cube minus b cube. Right now is equal to. You can take this time four t by 
a that of course 4 t a of course gets cancelled you will be getting like that. So, what you can take now as a common feature factor over here 4 into 4 that is 4 t by 3 into 4 pi a square 4 pi into a square plus b square minus c square. Now, look at carefully what can be cancelled here 4 pi I can cancel 3 on both sides I can cancel. Then what is surface tension is the question there. Now, surface tension T is equal to P into C cube minus A cube minus B cube divided by 4 comes over here down 4 into A square plus B square minus C square. Check this option which one is tallying there please. P into C cube minus A cube minus B cube by 4 into a square plus b square minus c square, fourth option is being tallied. So, this is going to be the correct option for question number 13. One of the excellent models again this one also. Let us check the next number that is question number 14 as such. If a number of small droplets of a liquid of density rho, surface tension T and specific heat C each of radius r coalesce to form a single drop of radius capital R, then the rise in temperature will be how much? This is a linked up model. Surface tension is now linked up with the concepts of heat. So, one should understand what is the work done when you are coalescing smaller droplets into a bigger drop as such. You can identify directly 4 pi small r square into n minus n power 2 by 3 into t that is actually the equation what we have. But all of you should understand w should be written as j times m into c into theta. All of you know w is equal to j h is joules law officially. h is called heat energy that is converted or that is being produced. So, m s delta t the formula, c is the specific heat given, theta I am taking it as the variation in temperature there is equal to 4 pi r square I take it as it is. But how to write n now? r cube by small r cube minus how to write n small n to the power 2 by 3 please r square by r square into t I can write. Now, check carefully in this particular case now, when you multiply this one, how to write mass now? J into mass is going to be 4 by 3 pi r cube, right, into rho, that is density, into c, into theta. That is actual formula what we are having. Now, which r to be taken here? That is very, very important for you. 4 by 3 pi r cube rho. What for we people have to take like this? It is of the resultant drop we are considering. Therefore, that is equal to here also 4 pi r cube you take common. Then r square by r cube becomes 1 by r. And r square r square gets cancelled. Here you, will, you are left with 1 by capital R into t. Now, what can we cancel? 4 pi r cube I can cancel on both sides. Then what is now left over? What is the question actually that is being asked? What is the value of theta? That is the question there. You definitely can understand what is the value there. Now what will be the value here you are getting? 3 comes over here. Therefore, theta is equal to 3 t by what is left over here? J rho c into 1 by r minus 1 by r. This is the equation. Look at that one, which one is tallied over there? 3t by j rho c into 1 by r minus 1 by r. So, correct option is going to be the second option for this particular question number 14. So, what you should understand in this particular case is whenever smaller droplets are coalesced to form a bigger drop like this is the formula for work done, one has to remember. Let us check the very next problem, problem number 15 now please. A large number of liquid drops each of radius small r coalesce to form a single drop of radius capital R. The energy released in the process is converted into kinetic energy of the bigger drop so formed. 
if t is surface tension and rho is the density of the liquid then the speed of the bigger drop is once again same concept but with a slight modification please observe carefully what is he asking for concept is the same what is this work now to be called as half mv square one should write this one as because work and kinetic energy are equal here he is asking you what will be the speed of the bigger drop he is asking therefore half mv square is equal to 4 pi r square into r cube by small r cube minus r square by small r square into t once again almost the same repetition of the earlier problem but for this change now how to write this mass now it is volume 4 by 3 pi r cube into density into v square is equal to here also you take 4 by 4 pi r cube common this now becomes 1 by r minus 1 by r into t now what are the cancellations you can have once again 4 pi r cube you can cancel now what is left 2 into 3 is 6 so v square will now be 6 t into 1 by r minus 1 by r here rho is also there it comes down so what will be the velocity now it is root of 6 t by rho into 1 by r minus 1 by capital r this is the formula look at which cons which particular answer is correct fourth option is exactly correct for that 6 t by rho into 1 by r minus 1 by r this is also equally a very very important model as far as surface tension that is concerned now let us check the next problem problem number 16 as such when an experiment is performed to find the surface tension of a liquid on earth by capillary rise method the height of the liquid column is 4 cm when the same experiment is done on another planet whose mass is 4 times and radius is twice that of the earth then the height of the liquid column on the planet is how much one should understand first of all what is the formula for surface tension in terms of capillary rise t is equal to r h rho g by 2 cos theta this is the general formula but one thing you should understand when all other things are constants like h and g are inversely proportional to each other we people used to take up now h is inversely proportional to g is the concept but now the question is g on the planet suppose if i take is it not gm by r square formula please what is mass given there mass is four times that means into four i can write what about radius there radius is twice he said 2 r whole square so is not this 4 gm by 4 r square please now 4 gets cancelled and you are left out with g on earth that means g on earth and g on planet are equal then automatically h on planet and h on earth are also going to be equal what is h on earth given 4 centimeter therefore what will be the h on planet it also will be 4 centimeter only so first option is going to be the correct option for this question number 16 in fact the question is looking lengthy but option wise if you look at the calculation is quite simple and you can easily identify the right option there come to the 17th number please the very next question there four identical capillary tubes a b and a b c and d are dipped in four beakers containing water with tube A vertically, tube B at 30 degrees, tube C at 45 degrees and tube D at 60 degrees inclination with the vertical. Arrange the lengths of water column in the tubes in descending order. Descending order of course we all know. Bigger to the smaller value, more to less that is actually the concept. But one thing we should understand whenever we take there is a capillary tube dipped like this this is water like it is now going to have some capillary rise fine now same capillary tube when i place it this way this is water no doubt this will now be the surface but what you find is vertical height will not vary but length of the liquid column that varies in what way that varies means if i consider this is the tube this is the level of the liquid and this one is the vertical this is angle theta this will be h and this will be the value of l 
Then if you imagine a triangle over here, cos theta now becomes h by L. Therefore, L becomes h by cos theta. H being constant, L is inversely proportional to cos theta, the formula for us. Look at the very first one, please. What he has given you? A is vertically placed. That means theta is 0. Then automatically, L1 in this particular case or LA will now be H. What is LB now? H by cos 30. Cos 30 is going to be root 3 by 2. So, 2 H by root 3. Now, what about LC, please? H by cos 45, cos 45 being 1 by root 2, you will be getting root 2 times H. LD, if you take up cos 60, that is going to be 1 by 2, therefore, it becomes 2H. Now, look at carefully, this comes first, that is the highest and this comes the least, that is the least. So, D should be the highest and A should be the least. There is only one particular option in that particular case, the very first one, D, C, B, A. At M set level, of course, you need not check once again all these. D should be the first one, A should be the last one. See the options, there is only one option like that. Therefore, automatically the correct option will be the very first one there. Question number 18 now. Look at that wording once again. The radii of two columns of a U tube are R1 and R2. When a liquid of density rho having angle of contact 0 degrees is filled in it, the level difference of the liquid in the two arms is H. If G is acceleration due to gravity, then the surface tension of the liquid will be how much? In fact, we all know, just now I have reminded you that formula also. Surface tension T can be written as, right, R H rho G by 2 cos theta. But suppose cos theta, if it is 1, you need not write that one. Now the question is, h rho g by 2, you take it as it is. What will be this value of r? r now will be the effective value over here. r1, r2 by r1 minus r2. Whatever the value you people are getting here, this is actually the concept you have to take. That means, what will be the correct option over here now, please? Look at the very first option. H rho g will be there, right? By 2 will be there. What will be the effective radius? 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. That means, r1 r2 by r1 minus r2 or r2 minus r1, whichever is greater that minus the least value we can take up. So, this option is going to be correct over here. This even can be written H rho g by 2 into r1 r2 by r2 minus r1. This is the case when r2 is greater than r1. This is the case when r1 is greater than r2. Whichever option that is being tallied there, you can check that one. The very first option is the correct option for this question number 18. Look at the next number please, question number 19. A vessel whose bottom has a circular hole of diameter 1 millimeter is filled with water. Assuming that surface tension acts only at the hole, the maximum height to which water can be filled in the vessel without any leakage is, surface tension of water is given 75 into 10 power minus 3 Newton per meter and G value is given 10 meter per second square as such. This particular concept also, you can apply the same formula. Surface tension is equal to R H rho G by out of that, I want the value of H. It is 2T by R rho G. Now, substitute the values given over there, please. What is surface tension given? 75 into 10 power minus 3 by R. What is the radius that has been mentioned? Diameter is 1 millimeter. So, radius will be 0.5 mm. That is 5 into 10 power minus 3 meter you can write. 0.5 into 10 power minus 3 or 5 into 10 power minus 4 directly you can write it. Into rho it is 10 cube for water automatically we can understand. Into g that is already given 10. So, you can cancel these 4 off first of all. Now, this goes exactly 15 times. So, 30 into 10 power minus 3. In other words, 3 into 10 power minus 2 meter, that is nothing other than 3 centimeter as such. So, what is the correct option over there? You check it. The very first option is the correct option for us. That will now be 3 centimeter for this question number 19, please. Look at that next number, question number 20. 
Drops of liquid of density D are floating half immersed in another liquid of density rho. If the surface tension of the liquid is T, then the radius of the drop would be how much? That is the concept. That means it is half sunk. Half of that one is inside and the remaining half is outside. Then how to write that one? The weight is equivalent to 2 pi r into g. That is the formula one has to apply. What is weight actually m into g? So, 4 by 3 pi r cube into density d minus only half that is floating 2 by 3 pi r cube into rho into g. This is actually going to be 2 pi r into the surface tension t directly I can write it like this. This is the point. Now, what you can understand from this one you look at 2 by 3 pi r cube I can take common. Then automatically this will be 2d minus rho into g is equal to 2 pi r into t. Now, 2 pi I can cancel. r also gets cancelled r square times. Now, what is the question that is asked over there? Radius of the drop. r square is equal to 3t by what is left over here? 2d minus rho into g. Now, come on, if you want the value of r, put root under 3t by 2d minus rho into g. Look at that option, which one that is going to be correct there, please? 3t by g into 2d minus rho. The third option is the correct option for us in this problem number 20. Look at now the last number in this order. 21st question, please. A capillary tube of radius small r is immersed in water and water rises into it to a height h. Mass of water in the capillary tube is 5 into 10 power minus 3 kg. Another capillary tube of radius r by 2 is immersed in water. The mass of water that will rise into this tube is how much? In fact, a very, very commonly asked question. Common sense is enough. More radius means more mass. Very simple. So, mass is proportional to radius. So, you can write m1 by m2 is equal to r1 by r2. It is now given r is r2 is r1 by 2. So, this now becomes a 2 please. So, what will be now the value of m2? m1 by 2. What is the first mass that is given? 5 into 10 power minus 3 by 2. How much it will now be? 2.5 into 10 power minus 3 kg. So, whatever the mass that of course, he has given over there. Earlier it was 5 into 10 power minus 3. Now, it will be 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg as such. This is the correct option means mass is directly proportional to radius. You need not even do this problem also. The moment radius becomes half, automatically you can take it for granted mass also becomes half. But one thing one should understand from this, surface tension is one particular chapter where from one question is expected at MSET level and most of the people can certainly clear that question to secure one mark over there. So, try to read the topic carefully, remember the concepts carefully and see that the things are okay, perfect with that. So, the naturally the point is, the point is surface tension one particular topic where not many a number of concepts are also there. The concepts are very, very few in fact, whatever we are having. Thereby, the total number of formulae that of course, is less and understanding also is going to be very simple and easy for all of you. Therefore, a bit of concentration, if you put on this particular chapter, you certainly can get one particular question in the final examination and not only that, one mark you can secure and securing one mark in physics is something extraordinary, right? Remember these things carefully and work out well. Thank you.